please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. We have with us Rashi Shah, the Chairman and CEO of Edelweiss Financial Services, joining in from the sidelines of the Edelweiss India Conference 2018. Uh, Mr. Shah, hi, thank you very much for joining in. You know, I was reading a couple of your takeaways from the day one of the conference and it seemed to be quite an action-packed day. But uh, tell us what the on-ground field is, what our uh, feeling is and what are people talking about in terms of probably the key concerns and uh, the key ideas as well. I think overall, uh, the optimism around India still continues. Uh, I think the structural reforms, uh, investors are assessing the benefits of that, especially GST, uh, the recent union budget and all that. So I think investors are as bullish as they've been on India, and we have investors from across the world and Indian investors. So, and a lot of them are seeing this market correction as an opportunity to build a quality portfolio, acquire some quality companies. Because last few months, a lot of people were concerned about valuations as such. So as earnings are on an uptick, and if the valuations come down a little bit, it, uh, most investors feel it will present them a lot of opportunities to build quality portfolio. All right, uh, Mr. Shah, so that's quite reassuring, actually. You're saying that uh, this dip was a good entry opportunity. But the other point I wanted to ask you about, Mr. Shah, is uh, this has been a liquidity-driven market, right? Um, if you're going to be talking about no rate cuts in India, some rate hikes in the United States, uh, that liquidity is going to gradually get sucked out of the system. So do you think, first of all, that money will start moving to developed markets and there may not be enough uh, for India? Your sense on the same, or do you think that we'll have a largest part of the pie? I think overall now India has become a lot more permanent allocation in most of the global portfolios. Mm -hmm. You know, until a few years ago, what you are saying is right, India was more an episodic allocation. People came into mm -hmm. India and went out of India. Mm -hmm. But in the last three, four years, we have seen, especially after 2014, a lot of money coming into India is long-term India allocation from mm -hmm. pension funds, from sovereign wealth funds who have an horizon of 10, 20 years when they make a call on a country like India. So I don't think this will be as short term in and out and will affect that. Okay. But we do believe that I think the next three, four months, there is going to be a lot of global volatility. There might be a lot of India volatility because though everything is looking good, earnings are on an uptick, there is a lot of anxiety in the market, especially bond markets in India. And uh, that could spill over into equity markets. So you are right, there could be a little bit of you know, liquidity mismatch, which could create more volatility. But unlikely that most large global investors will uh, not allocate capital to India or will withdraw capital from India. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Shah, you've had a lot of representation from the banking as well as the NBFC space. And considering the hardening of the bond yields, there's been some worry in terms of the outlook going forward for cost of funds, net interest margins, and overall credit growth as well. Uh, what were your key takeaways and how much of a concern is it actually? I think the, uh, see, most of the NBFCs borrow from banks, borrow from the bond markets, all of that. So overall, I don't think uh, the NIMS will get affected by more than 20, 25 basis points. So I think our estimates are varying from NBFCs and housing finance companies, there is maybe a 20, 25 basis point impact on NIMS. But we are not seeing growth slow down at all. In fact, after GST demonetization, in, from August onwards, there has been a very significant uptick in housing, in SME, all of that. We've seen auto sales have been very robust in the last quarter. So I think the economic activity is providing a fairly good uptick, even the bank credit has improved last four or five years, bank credit was slow. So I think for NBFCs, housing finance companies, this is not having a big impact. Along with that, a lot of money is still flowing into mutual funds, a lot of money is flowing into insurance companies who are also now keen to invest in the bonds issued by NBFCs and others. So they, I think liquidity is not drying up. Maybe the cost may go up a little bit, but as I said, that will have a 20 to 25 basis point impact on, on NIMs. And overall, I think credit growth is not slowing down. In fact, now it is starting to pick up because we have absorbed demonetization, GST, and the economy is clearly on an uptick. 
All right, uh, Mr. Shah, so you're saying that credit optic will continue. Maybe NIMS could get compressed by 25 to 50 basis points, and you can live with that. So that's pretty good news. But what is the big risk then to our markets? You know, in the last seven days, 10 days, suddenly people are talking about uh, political risk. We're talking about uh, the crude price spike. That's causing a bit of a risk. Maybe the fiscal deficit number won't uh, look like uh, the number that we had budgeted in the past. And this is supposed to be the big year for India. Earnings growth is likely to come about in FY19. Which, according to you, is the biggest risk? If you, if you ask me for the biggest risk, I think it, it will have to be the oil price. But mm -hmm. you know, uh, the various things people are talking about, political risk, all this is just conversation because every time there is a market correction, every time there is a fall, people mm -hmm. try to attribute reasons for that. Mm. There is it's it's a good hobby to have. It's a good you know <laughs> uh, you know parlor conversation on why the markets are falling and what's happening. I think the only real risk we have because oil price impacts inflation, will impact current account deficit, all of that. And oil price, I think another four five dollars here and there. I don't think is a big impact. So I think the biggest thing to watch out for is oil price. But what has happened is, as I said. There is a lot of anxiety. There is a lot of anxiety, especially in the bond market, which has spilled over into the equity market, from global anxiety and the and the Indian bond market anxiety. And I do feel that government and Reserve Bank of India should communicate more with the investors and markets and calm down the bond markets. But I think it will not be a bad thing if we have a more sideways consolidation, a little bit of correction for the next three, four months and allow this anxiety to go away because nothing is changing in India. On the ground, things are fairly good. If oil price stays here, earnings growth is on an uptake. I think the reform process, the, the big structural reforms are done. Now the execution starts, so hard work has been done. So overall, no big cause of, for concern, but you are absolutely right. There is a lot of anxiety and part of the anxiety can go away with clear communication and commentary from RBI, government, all of that.